I got the dash primed. I meant to get the camera out and film some priming, and it never crossed my little mind. Um, let me grab some light, because you can't see doobly squat. Dash is primed. Up under the dash. I primed all up under here. Most of it. Not not every inch of it, but most of it. I primed everything that was bare metal or rusty or had been sanded. I'm gonna come back later and scuff everything else when I actually paint it. Paint it. But for now I got like, everything that was going to rust. It was rusty that you know it's it's a uh, it's prime epoxy prime now. And of course the dash. A pillars primed. Um, spot in the B pillar I fixed is primed. My uh, seat belt bolt places are primed. That's the dash of course. Top of the dash. Uh, this is epoxy primer. It's a PPG primer. I've been using this stuff for years. I really like it. One of those other brands out there a lot of people use. I like I like this. I like it. I just I this is what I use. Um a pillar. So anyway, primer. Um, I got, I'm going to let this dry, and then tomorrow, after this is dry, I've also got the firewall. I've got it sanded down and metal prepped. So tomorrow, after the inside dries, I will wash this down and then prime this. I still got a small place or two to prime. Still, got a little spot right here. I got to fix to epoxy prime. But 90, I'd say 95% of the epoxy primer on this cab now is finally done. Well, 90%. Firewall ain't done, but it will be. That's a, that's a major thing. Um, then I'll start wiping filler on my dash. I got to fix the place where I welded the speaker hole up. Uh, the speak, the, fill my switch holes a few places here and there. I did some work. Nothing huge. So that's it for now. Okay. The quote, what's your name? Oops, I did it again. Um, I forgot to cut the camera on when I was priming. Epoxy priming. So obviously the firewall is epoxy primed. So this thing is, this thing, this firewall is a lot straighter than I remembered it being. The only real places I gotta, I gotta put filler on of the few places where I shaved, you know, shaved some holes and added a plate or two, kind of right along in here and right up down in here. Most of the firewall is straight. I won't, all I gotta do is really block it. I'm not trying to make it show a car perfect, so I'm gonna leave the factory wrinkles and stuff in it. Anything that was an actual dent, I would fix, but there's really nothing I, I've seen over here, um, except like I said, the ones I described over here that I gotta fix from where I welded and patched and stuff. Even my patches in my wells look pretty darn good because there's a patch right in there. You can see a little bit of that's more primer than anything, overspray, kind of making it look like a wave. But anyway, there will be a little bit of filler in there and, and over here. And then uh, dash, I think I already showed the dash, it's primed. It's, uh, it's ready to start putting filler on. So my next thing I'm going to do here in just a few minutes is start putting filler on this dash. And one thing I like to do, um, especially on, on more subtle and minor dents and flaws. Get light, get glare, whatever you can do, go along and kind of look and you can see the places I have marked with the, with the painter's tape, except minus the, you know, the patch here for the center, a little dents or flaws, places where I've either welded or a little, couple little dents. Now, the speaker, oh, the speaker, the AC pods, I'm actually going to wipe a small amount of fiberglass filler. I'll show you that later. Just in the in the um, the valley here, and basically I'm going to take it and dress it with my finger. I could do it with filler, but I'm just going to use fiberglass. Yeah, yeah what the heck? That, you know, six and one half dozen the other. Not heavy, just enough to make a basically use my finger as a as a shaping tool on this side and the other side. The bottom. I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to do anything to it just yet other than put a little filler in there. Because it feels, well, as I'm standing here, as I'm standing here checking it, I don't know. 
I don't know yet about the bottom part. I may actually, I don't know yet. I'll figure it out as I go. The places where I welded my switches in might need just a tiny dab of filler. I gotta put, I'm gonna put a, another, another um, finger rub of fiberglass up in this crease right here. Just, just to kind of, you know, smooth it out some. There's not a lot of filler needed in that dash. The biggest amount by far is where I put that patch in. And even it's not huge. But it is there. It definitely needs some filler put in it. It's not perfect. I'll have to put a little bit back here where I welded up these patches and that striker plate. And a couple little holes right here I welded up. One here and one on the other side over there. So that's my next project right now. Start putting some filler on. Um, I guess I'll leave the camera on. I'm using this Rage Ultra Dabber Coat stuff, which a lot of people are using. It's good filler. It's expensive, but it's good filler. Um, and then a lot of times I use cheese graters to knock to knock it down. It all depends on what kind of dent I'm filling. You know, the small ones, the little bitty ones, size of your hand and smaller. And if you catch the filler just right, you can knock it down with 36 before it gets good and hard. Uh, the or use the cheese grater. But if you're, do, if you're doing a big panel like a door or a fender or a hood or something, just wipe it on there, let it harden up. Then I use a use an 8 inch sander to dress mine with. I don't have any filler, I don't have any spots to fill left in this truck like that, so you won't get to see that. Um, at least not on this truck anytime soon. But the small stuff, my hand obviously, I'll be using tape chick chicken graters. God damn it. I mean, sorry. I'll be using the. Uh, Cheese graters, tape, some people call them tater graters, cedar cheese graters. They're actually made for filler. If I had one in a package, I'd show you. Um, and then 40, 36 grit. Um, this is wore out, but that's 36 grit I use a lot. I either fold it around a blocking stick, which is the old body man way of doing it. Like old, really old school, which I still do on smaller stuff. I've got the... Uh, the new school blocks, the, uh, I forget who makes them. I'll grab one when I get to work and filler. Dewar block. I've got several of those from the small ones up to that great big one. It's like about two foot long, foot and a half or something. And, and uh, you know, use a stick it roll paper to go on those. So as I do more filler and get different, different, uh, scenarios, or not scenarios, different situations, I'll show you how I do it. This dash will probably mostly be either cheese grater and 36 to start with. And we'll try not to over, overly do it. Um, I got, I'm going to try to wipe just the dash first and do the pillars later so I can kind of keep them separated as far as the, what gets hard when. Because if you let that stuff get hard, it gets hard. It's hard, hard, much harder to sand. If you can catch it in the right window, it's much easier to sand. Um, but I've been, like I said, I'm an old body man. I've done this stuff for, for many, many years. So there's a lot of tricks here that just come from experience and just kind of knowing. It's hard, to, and it's really hard to explain. Just it's just if you do it, you learn. That's kind of the way we just kind of some of this stuff goes. So anyway, let me quit yapping. I'll uh, I'll get the camera set up and figure out how I'm going to show this. Because once you mix that filler, you got a you got a pot light. You can't stand there and yap. And, Play around, you gotta get it done. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, I'm gonna mix this filler. But I don't, I'm not gonna move the camera this time. Um, it's just too much trouble to do while I'm trying to mix filler and get it white. So, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll put the camera in, in the Put the camera over here where I mix my filler next time I do this. So you kind of see how I do it. Alright, here we go. So obviously I'm gonna wipe the uh, speaker patch first. Yeah, speaker radio, whatever. Speaker I guess it is. Um and it's kind of important on your first when you first put it on here to, to wipe a thin layer and press in, you know, press in pretty hard 
that kind of gets it to stick. Well, that's the wrong word. It gets it in all the imperfections and the low spots and the dimples. If you just go on there and just slap it on there and wipe it and don't really rub it in, for lack of a better term, you're inviting pinholes and, and just, just lots of blemishes and stuff that you don't want. It's hard to explain. You know, you wipe enough filler, you see enough, you know, flaws and stuff that goes wrong. It's, but it's hard to explain if you don't really kind of understand. Just, it's, it's just a good habit to do. Now that I've got it kind of wiped on that first layer, or not the first layer, first little bit for whatever you want to call it, I'm adding, adding a height, you know, more to it, building up the thickness, basically. Um, body filler, I guess, is kind of an art. I don't know that it's actually true that it is, but there's a thousand ways to do it, and 999 of them are probably okay. There's a few that are wrong, you know, but most of those wind up being they put it on way too thick. In the old days, I think, well, I shouldn't say old days. Back when I started doing body work, back in the, well, a long time ago, there were people putting it on a quarter inch thick and not worrying about it a whole lot. That's back in the late, very late 70s and up into the 80s. You should never put it on that thick, but people were doing it. Of course, it cracks and turns loose. Now, body filler in the 70s and even in the 80s, body filler's come a long way. Technology. Now, I'm about to run out here, so let me stop yapping and wipe these few spots I got left to wipe. So we'll continue our body, we'll continue our filler discussion later. I want to get these done while I... I mixed, I mixed, a, I mixed a smallish amount on purpose because I didn't want to waste this stuff. I hate to waste anything. And that includes body filler. Lapping a bunch of small areas can be tricky because you wind up mixing it a bunch of them in I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. I hate to waste it. Like I said, I hate to waste this stuff. small spots. I'm just kind of putting some on here. I'm not being real particular about it. Well, I am. That's not true. It's hard to explain. It's just... Where'd that dent go? It's, it's hard to explain. Put it into words. Huh? Stuff's about to set up now, too. So I hit, I hit this batch just right. It's about to set up on me. Or it is setting up on me. Let's see if I can catch one more spot. See these, these are, these are a couple of spots where I welded brackets under my dash and ground them down. That's just a little dimple. Not really enough for filler. But since I've got the filler out, I'm gonna put some on there. Just makes it a little faster to get it prepped for primer. Uh, filler, primer, filler, filler primer, what do you call it? Can't say the name. You know what I'm talking about. Alright. So that's done. I've also kind of got my own method for cleaning up afterwards. Which again, I'll, I'll get the camera over here later and show you how I do it. Now the way I do this, the trick is to catch it when it's just starting to set up, but not hard all the way yet. It makes it so much easier to sand on. You have to be careful if you, if you go in there too early, you know, the gums up the paper and the cheese grater. And again, this is one of those experienced things. See, we're just about right here. This is one of those experienced things where I can't I can't tell you how to do it. You're just gonna have to do it and learn. 
tell you what you don't want. You don't want your paper getting gummed up. <laughs> Obviously. And you'll just have to learn. That's just the experience thing. I can't teach it. I can't teach that to you with words. You're going to have to do it and experience it to understand. And I'm messing up because my light's in the way. And I forgot to block. So now I'm, I'll be all right. I'm going to work it from this side, but it's a little easier to use. At least around it. Yeah. So I'm just basically, when this stuff gets dry and starts to dry, the top, it forms kind of a tacky. Well, not kind of, it forms a tacky. It, it gets tacky on top, and that tacky, that tacky coating will gum your paper up in a heartbeat. When you start to sand, but if you can knock that down without going too far, and the, and the paper will sand really nice, and you won't gum up paper. It might gum it up a little bit, but not the amount it would if you just let it dry all the way and then start sanding. And there is many people that do that. I think everybody has their own methods. My method wouldn't work for everybody. There's going to be people saying I ain't doing it right, but I've only fixed a few thousand cars, so, you know, it's worked for me through the years. I can, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Certainly everybody won't like this method. It's how I do it, it's how I've done it, it's how I like it to do it, and it's how I'm gonna keep on doing it. Okay. It works for me. If you're only here trying to learn to do body work, this is probably not the video for you, but you can see how I do it and decide if you want to try it or not. I'm not gonna offend me. If you don't like it or if you do like it, great. If you don't, I'm, you know, okay. It's just a method that works for me, like I said. Also, this is not, this is not collision work. This is not, I'm not sitting here on the, on the clock. Got to fix this car in two days or the customer is going to get pissed and yada, yada, yada. Paint shops got to have cars in tomorrow. And there's a thousand things when you're doing it for a living. It's variables, variables. And I'm not the fastest body man around. That's for damn sure. I never was and never will be. But I try to take my time and do things right. Or as right as I can do them anyway. shaping this kind of the best I can to get it close and again this is just an experience feel type of thing I, you got you have to learn to do this for yourself nobody can really they can tell you the techniques to use but to actually do it you got to do it yourself and then these I'm gonna knock these down because they're really high get most of the excess off. If you're a sculptor, or if you can if you can shape wood or if you can shape anything by hand, you can do body work. Just might be a little bit bigger scale. Let me rephrase that. You can use plastic filler and do body work. Using lead it's a whole different ball game. It's, it's still a filler. Still got to be shaped, but it's a whole different, whole different skill set that I don't have. I laid it one time just to see if I could do it, and I did do it. Uh, plastic filler is just so much easier and faster. It, it still gets a bad rap in certain circles, but if you use it correctly, y'all also might be sitting there wondering why 
putting the filler on top of the primer. Modern fillers, even back into the 80s and 90s, can could be put on top of a, of a epoxy primer. It's well, it's well, uh, it's cured, but not overly dry. In other words, the PPG primer that I use has got a three-day window. Or you can apply anything to it, primer, filler, whatever, without having to sand it. Um, one of the bad things about plastic filler, especially years ago, and it, but it will still to this day, it, it absorbs moisture. So if you put it on a panel, you know, say I ground this, say this grass, this dash was ground down to bare metal, which is how we all started doing plastic filler years ago. Over time, that filler can absorb, absorb moisture, especially if you drill holes through it and then use the old snatch bar and everything. And then your panel that your filler's on will start to rust from the inside and eventually it'll pop off. The filler will pop. And there's millions of, well, not millions. There's lots of cars through history that's, that's, that's happened to. Now I'm going to stop yapping a minute. I'm going to take my block. Still not good and hard, but it's just the perfect time to be sanding on it. And it sands beautiful when it's in this in this state right here. I've got a long longer block I should probably be using. But I'm sitting here already in here. And I'm just gonna cross my fingers I can do it with this one. There is one. You do have to kind of deal with the, with the sandpaper or with the filler kind of gumming up the paper. But you can generally, I tap on it with a paint stick, just a panel or something. And it'll pop, generally it'll pop right loose. Of course, curve, I've got a curve area right here I've got to be real careful with in this block. Not to gouge it out. I'll get a curve block for this later on. For that, I mean, right now I'm just trying to work the big flat spots. But anyway, this primer, this is a this is epoxy primer. You can put filler on top of epoxy primer, and it'll stick just fine. In fact, it probably sticks better to that than it does bare metal. Now the newer primers, like that Rage Ultra I'm using, they say you could even put that over over the top of paint. You know, factory finish, factory finish as long as they're well sanded. I've never done it, but uh, they probably, they wouldn't tell you you could do it if it wouldn't work, but it would be causing catastrophe in the, in the body repair industry if they said something like that would work and it actually wouldn't. So I'm sure it probably does work. It definitely works on top of this primer, the positive primer. Now, I've done this for years, and it works great. And it keeps your you know, that protects the panel. Number one, the primer's on here protecting the panel. And then the filler on top of that sticks. It's a chemical adhesion, not just mechanical. And it sticks really well. It just it just works really well. So I don't put filler on bare metal anymore, body filler. I always try to prime first. Been doing it that way for many, many years. I'm just, I'm just sanding away here until I get up there where I kind of like it. And again, some of this is steel. Some of it is I can see it. I can see dents in the floor. I can see low spots. I can see high spots. It all comes again from experience and knowing what you're doing.
extra methods. You can get a DA out, you can get a machine out, you can do it lots of mechanical methods. I just like doing this way. It's slow and methodical, it's just kind of my nature. the patch I made right here. See that bare spot starting to poke through. So I'm trying not to work on that, work that down even more. See if I can get it feathered in out here on the edges into my panel. And we look like we're starting to feather in pretty good. So in a minute here, I'm gonna stop with this 40 grit. I'll switch to 80 grit and I get a round paper, round block. Um, so that's that's rough in. Feels pretty good. Now we hit these other little dents right quick. I think I mentioned this is this is 40 grit or 36 grit. 30, it was here for, this is 36 on the block that I haven't used. This sticky paper, I think, is either 36 or 40. And it's like it's one of the little Dura blocks. So I'm just knocking that down. So I gotta be careful. up in this curve. If you didn't completely understand what you were doing, somebody out there on the deal and me will never do it. That's fine. You know, what works for every person is different. Showing you what works for me. I'm not telling you how to do it. You do it the way it works for you. But maybe you'll see the way I do it and say, hey, that might work for me. Let me give it a try. That's all I'm here for. I was 
taught to wipe filler. In big areas, I, I taught myself to do small body work type stuff when I was 17. As far as collision repair, I was taught to wipe filler by a guy that had been doing collision work at that point about 20 years. And the things he taught me then are still principles that I use to this, to this day. Um, the fillers have changed and primers have changed and yada yada yada. But the techniques and the skills are still pretty much the same. If you don't believe that, then fine, I'm not going to argue with you, but maybe you're right. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's, that's, that's my take on it. I'm sure you're not trying to preach to anybody. And if I am, I apologize. It's not my intent. There's a lot of guys on YouTube showing how they do filler. A lot of them I won't agree with. But that's just because I do it this way. They do it their way. a low spot right here still it may block down I don't know yet all right let me get out of here and move around a little bit so here's a top view um, I mentioned that I can see low spots and high spot that's an obvious high spot either or it's just right um, so you, it's either high or it's about the, the, the proper height so that went to metal a low spot there's a dark spot right here. You put, see a little dark spot right there? That's a low spot. So you can see here where the sandpaper has, has hit all this filler and it missed right there. That's a low spot. Now that may come out when I block it or it may be truly low. I won't know till I block on it with some more 80 grit. This is 46 grit blocking like I just said. Um, but it's, it's roughed in. The shape feels really nice. That spot definitely feels low, so more than likely that will not block out. But I'll find out. I got to block this this curve here, which I haven't. I've only just roughly blocked at it. Um, I will do a much better job of it here in just a moment. I also mentioned I can see places where it didn't feather. See how like this dent here? See how the the sand feather the feathering is all out into the edge of the metal, and even on this one, and this one. Oops, on that one. See right here this little dark ridge, that line? That's a low spot. That's where I didn't get, I put filler up here when I should have put it down here. So I missed this area with the filler. So that's a clear indication of a low spot. So I, I got down to it and I just stopped because I got to put more filler in. You could try to primer fill that, but why do that? That's just wasteful. Just put some more filler in. Um, so let me uh, let me get my, eight, oh, and uh, talking about my Bondo, my filler setup, Bondo setup. It's a piece of quarter inch plexiglass. I've had this piece of stuff for, I guess, going on almost 40 years. My dad got this for me from Delta Airlines. Like I said, he I think I said before, he worked at Delta and could get all kind of stuff. I've had this piece of, this piece of quarter inch fiber plexiglass, like sand, plexiglass, whatever, has wiped nearly every car I ever fixed. Thousands, hundreds, thousands of cars. Um, and all you do is I use a putty knife to mix my filler with, which is you know a thick putty knife. Um, it, hang on a second, because what I do, like when I was doing this for a living every day, you wipe and filler all day long. Take a bucket, fill it full of lacquer thinner, and you keep, keep your uh, spreaders. Can't see spreaders and your and your knife or whatever in the lacquer thinner. And that stops the filler from completely hardening. So hang on, I'm fixing to clean one off here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Um, the filler is on there, but it's not hardened. So all you have to do, you can't see this, is you just take a rag and wipe it off and it comes right off. Easy as pie. 
to get a little bit of ridge on top, like that ridge right there that hardened up, you just take a scraper, a razor, razor knife, which I've got here somewhere, and just knock, knock, knock that right down. This this plate of knife has wiped many hundreds, if not thousands, of gallons of a uh, of a uh, body filler. And then the spreaders, same trick. You put them in there, and then most of this, most of the time I get most of the filler off. You already had this one pretty clean before I put it in there. So it's just a matter of taking a taking a rag, and I'm trying to do this where you can see it. Wipe it down. If there was a little bit of filler remaining, it, it, would, it would pop right off, and you're out, you're ready to go again. So that keeps you from having to stand there and fill them and clean them after they get dry, which is a pain in the butt. I don't recommend that to nobody. Get you a bucket, uh, some kind of container, put some lacquer thinner in it, dump your, fill, dump your spreaders in it and your, and your plate knife or whatever, and you'll thank me for that advice later. So what I do... I put my filler on the on the pad or the uh, plexiglass, however much it is. Add my hardener to it, and then I take the take the uh, plate of knife and work it in. See this bare spot in the middle? That's where I usually work at, and then it spreads around. And over time, when I when I finish wiping, you heard me do it a while ago, but you didn't know what I was doing. I was scraping the excess filler off, and then. Uh, when you do that, the way I do it, I've done it forever. Take a trash can with trash can liners, and you rub it off. And uh, there's none on here now to show you, but you can tell. And then uh, over time, this layer will will start to build up. So all you do is take a grinder. I take a take a three inch grinder on my on my die grinder. Um, you can see the, the circle marks from the grinder. Just lightly go over it. Not grind the crap out of it, just just enough to knock that filler off, and you're ready to go. Like I said, this this panel is 40 years old. It's wiped thousands of cars, and it's still quarter of an inch thick. So I haven't, you know, you can take care of this thing. Um, for wiping filler, don't put it on cardboard. You see guys that do that, don't do that. Don't put it on cardboard. Cardboard's absorbs. There there's resins and stuff in here in this filler. Cardboard will absorb that stuff. I tell, I, I'm just saying. I'm just telling you. Please don't do it. For, this will be my second rant ever on my channel. Don't mix filler on cardboard. Don't do it. It's just not good. Find anything. Find metal. Find plastic. Find something. Just don't use cardboard. It just ain't. It's not good. Don't do it. All right. End of rant number two. Uh, if you missed my first rant, it was about using coat hangers as welding rods. Oh, that just anyhow so uh, that's my filler technique let me get the camera up well actually we got to do some more blocking first so let me let me set up for that so hold on all right the block uh, up in this curved area I've got a, another, another dura block it's a round can you see that it's a round block come on camera come on light so you just wrap your stick it paper or paper I use a stick it kind of just wrap it around the block and uh, my curve obviously is here going into it, so I'm going to block into it with the curve. Now, this block, this dirt block, will stay straight. It doesn't form over the curve. A lot of guys feel like they have to get curved blocks that match the surface. I mean, that's fine. Um, I can I can do it without it. I just I use the block and then rotate the block around. Let it kind of fall to the contour. And again, it's one of those things you can't really be taught to do it. You just gotta see somebody do it and say, hey, I want to try that. I can I can do that too. It's just a technique. Take practice. The biggest thing at this point now, I'm using my hand to feel with. And yes, you know, you can feel stuff with your hands. You, Think you can't do it, but you can. It's a learned thing. You gotta kind of do it to learn to do it. But you can do it. Because every body man does this. You can do it. And also use your eyes. You can see how things are blocking. If you're blocking on something, you get a big bubble in the middle, like this hot this silver spot, you got a high spot. 
If you've got a big old big panel here and you're working fine, that pops up, you got a high spot. Or I showed you a low spot before, everything looks good, that one dark hole in the middle, that's a low spot. But use your eyes too. I'm trying to block into this area by being by keeping this my block, you know, in plane with what I'm blocking. And I'm not trying to gouge into it. That's why I'm using two hands to control the block better. And again, that's just a skill and a practice thing. You, you have to do it, to practice it to be able to do it. I don't want to tell a beginner to do that, but in the end, you're not going to be able to learn if you don't do it. Practice it. But prepare for some frustration if you're new to this. And learning how to do it. Just take your time. Don't get in a hurry. I mentioned slow and methodical. That's that's me. So, anyway, I, I really can't say a lot more about that than that. Now, see, I'm starting to pair that up to metal, so and it feels feels pretty good. The only problem I'm gonna wind up having, I may have a butthole. We used to call them buttholes. Your fillers come along and you take a big dive and come back up. We call them buttholes. I may wind up having a butthole right here when that filler blends in. And I won't know until I block on it somewhere. But that right there feels pretty darn good. So I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch blocks now to my flat block. Now I mentioned zero blocks. I got the bigger block that everybody's used to. This this block is too big to be sanding sanding it right here. They would sand this much of it, and I could do it, and I'll probably will switch to this at some point. But for this small, just starting out what I was doing, I can get this block in here better. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a choice. This one would certainly do it. And at some point, I will switch to this. Just haven't switched to it yet. I've also got this type. It's the same length as this one. It's just, you know, the thicker one with a hand hold. I could have used it instead of this one. I just like this little small one for small stuff like this. It's just a preference thing. None of it's really right or wrong. Well, anyway, let's block in here. You know, see what when you block with the 80 grit, you start to let's see what you've actually got. The scratches in the 36 are so rough, it's hard. I mean, you, you know that you got it straight-ish, but so 36 grit scratches are so close. It does kind of, it's hard to tell if you actually got it really, really, really straight. 80 grit, you know, you're starting to get down smooth enough where you can really start to feel it nice if it's flat. Yeah, that's, that's feeling pretty good. And as I said, use your eyes. Watch your, watch your feather edges out here. If it's feather edging real nice, then more than likely you're pretty straight. You got a big, like here, like a big dark line or something, or a big high spot, then you're, you got high spots and low spots. You gotta work out. That didn't feel good, by the way. You gotta deal with it. Out here on the edge of this pillar line, where I'm, I'm saying there's a butt hole, um, there might be a butthole out here. And I apologize for calling it butthole. It's just what I've called it that for 40 years. The guy that taught me filler work called him butthole, so I'll call him butthole. And of course, when you block, you want to go across, you want to zigzag, and you know, you stone straight in one, one pattern. You got to crisscross and. Um, there's all kinds of people on YouTube explaining block sand a lot better than I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'm just giving you a real crash course. You'd have to get on, on a big panel like a door or a fender or a hood or something to really show it well. Small spots, you know, the techniques are the same, but on a small spot, 
versus a big spot, there's a lot of differences, obviously. So I'm just continuing the block to you. I am kind of pissed off and zigzagging. The reason I'm using two hands here is just it's not because I'm tired and my arms hurt. That's got nothing to do with it. I can control the block and keep it very, very flat. And then like going down back into this, this V right here, which kind of rolls down. But you can't block with a flat block, but you can block with the edge. And on these Dura blocks, the sandpaper hangs over the edge a little bit. Come on. See that right there? Come on. You use that to your advantage. You can use that edge up in some tight spots. So I'm taking that edge and rolling my block up and using two hands so I can control it and block them down into that edge right there. And a lot of guys will tell you don't do that. And that's fine. But it works for me. I can do it. So if I can do it, I'm going to do it. And I can do it and it works. I have to get in the cab to see the front side. But this, from back here, is looking really good. And feeling good, too. I could have just done a line from a movie and I didn't do it. <laughs> so give me some credit for that one. Kudos if you can guess what movie it was. Kudos to you if you can guess what movie it was. You probably can't, but... I'm going to re-hit this up here again, real lightly. The goal is to not sand the epoxy primer off, but if you do around the edges, I don't cry over that. Um, you're, going to put, you're going to put 2K primer on top of that, top of it. That stuff sticks incredibly well. Some people actually go to trouble of repriming with, with epoxy primer. I don't do that. I, I never have. I just I never had any problem. I just don't do that. If it was a big old area and I knocked, knocked it down. Yeah, I might think about it. But like this spot here, I'm not gonna worry about it. Primer, a two uh, K primer will be just fine for that. Okay. I think we're pretty good there. Let me get inside the cab. Get the front side so I can see it. Get you down using two hands again to hold the block straight. I, I should I should switch to the long block here, and when I start blocking primer, I will. But since I've already got this and I know how to do this, I'm just I'm just going to continue continue using this flat block or shorter block. spot right here actually feels hot. There's a bread, there's a shiny spot. I'll try and show it in a minute. In a minute. It actually feels a tick high. But it also might block out. But no that's that's a tick high. Alright, I'm I need, I need to address that, so I will get out and address that and show you what I'm gonna how I'm gonna do that. The rest of this feels pretty good. Let me get up in this corner. You gotta work this on down. Make sure it spread the edges in.
That feels pretty good. This all feels pretty good over here. Okay. This front may wind up being a little wavy. But I think, I think the primer surface there will be able to handle that just fine. It's not definitely not worth we it's not worth re-wiping. That's all you can say. I'm sure I got down here with that I can see. Not in the spot while I'm here. See these little dents like this, you just knock them down, feather them off into that primer. Okay, there's that one. And this one up here. Last of all, I gotta be white, so I don't need to do that. I gotta hit that one over there that I can't get from here. Let me show you how I'm going to fix this right here. First off, this spot over here wound up being low. See that line again? The dark spot? And I can feel it too. It's low. This whole little area right here is actually low. So, I got to refill this whole little spot right here. So here's the, here's the, uh, the high edge I'm talking about. When you, you you want your filler to feather edge like this, just a nice gradual taper off into the into your primer or filler, whatever metal. That's feather edge. And when you get the high spot like this, that real shiny spot, that's a high spot. It's a primer edge. The filler edge here is low. This is high. Now this is different. This this feathered. See how it gradually tapers out? It's feathered in. You just got a little touch of a high spot. When I block, the, the primer filler will come in here and fill this little tiny little bridge, which is not even really a, a ridge, and you'll never know that's there. This has got a high enough spot, so basically it's coming along, it's flat, it's pooched up. Whoa, it's coming along flat, little pooch up, and then back in again. That's what that's what this right here is. So you you could wipe filler on top. And make your panel basically have a gradual hump in it, but that's not the way to do it because you, then your panel's not going to be flat. You got to get, I'm trying to see what I'm doing with the camera in my hand. You got to get this area down. So there's a couple ways you can do it. I, I, my, my two body hammers that I use the most are this one that has the back straight edge on it. You could go in here and tap right along that high spot like that or you can use a pick hammer which is what this is um, this is very similar or it is the same the same idea as the bullseye picks you've seen the sheet metal guys use the, the coach guys that they have a pick that goes in there and one side's got a dolly and one side's got a pick and it, it picks together and taps up low spots or it taps down highs it's the exact same process just you got a hammer that does that so most of the times I use the pick hammer method because I can just go in here and tap it down. The trick on this one is that I have to put a dolly behind it. As I'm trying to show you how I'm going to do it, I'm not going to put a dolly back in. I'm going to see if I can do it by hand without a dolly. So let's just try it right quick and see what happens. I've got to make sure I can show what I'm doing here. So i got to watch this, not the camera. So. bouncing so I, I'm not moving it a whole lot but it don't take much got to hit it just a little bit more okay, those, hits sounded, those hits sounded a little more solid we've actually worked it down a little bit I 
I'm not hauling off and hitting this thing. I'm just tapping on it. Again, that's just an experience thing. That feels pretty good. Now, let me try. Let me take my block and see if maybe I might have fixed it just, just by blocking it. But my guess is I've now got this a tick low. You see that edge feathering better already right there? We're still it's better over here on the edge. Over here in the middle it's still a little bit. It's walking on me a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it back over here, Tab, Tad. And you're probably sitting there wondering, was that panel bent that far out before? And the answer is, eh, I don't know. The the the, uh, the combination of welding that new patch in, dollying on it, and the heat has made this panel move for sure. There's no doubt. Originally, that this may, may have been straight as an arrow out here. Now it's got a little bit of movement. That's just all there is to it. sit here and debate why it's doing this. I'm fixing a dent. I'm the body man at this point. I gotta fix this dent. Okay, that's just just barely low, which is what I want. And I'm talking, you know, I don't know about distance measurement wise, but it's just barely low. So another little bit of wiping the filler. And that's where that's where a lot of body work, that's where your finesse, a lot of body work finesse comes in. A lot of people get filler straight in the middle when it's just filler because you can block with filler. When they have trouble, where you got to learn, where you got to practice is out on the edges where things blend in and blend out and feather and all that. That's a, you, I know you've all seen the paint job on the car that has, you know, it looks good on the side and you see this big massive butthole. For lack of, of a better term, that's a big butthole in their filler work that they did on there. They didn't block it out well. They didn't get the filler in there right. Um, that's why we call them buttholes. It looks like a giant butthole inside of a car. Like somebody took a butt and backed into it. That's that's it. Anyway, that just needs a little bit of filler wipe. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll wipe it on out into here a little bit to feather it on down some more. And I think we'll be in really good shape. So here's the, here's the panel from this side, obviously. Um, it feels really nice. It feathers in really nice. This is the spot I was worried about earlier being a butthole. But it's very, very close. And see, there's a small rise here. You know, it does one of these up into the speaker, I mean the speaker vent. So when I block this with primer, it'll just fill right in. So that's that's going to be no problem. This is the one I missed earlier. Like I said, I got to fill that one because of that. And then, I, like I said, I got to refill this one because this, this one got low on me. I wound up not filling it high enough, low much not filling it enough and it got low. It was always low. That one's blocked. So, um, now here, here's a scratch or a pinhole right there. Um, blazing putty, polyester, the good stuff, the polyester type blazing putty, not the red stuff that we used to use 30 years ago. That stuff shrinks. A little bit of glazing putty will fix that, or I'll hit it, hit it with a dab of filler. When I, uh, so I got a few pinholes here, not bad, but a few small ones. See right there. A little bit of putty or even primer will fill those right up. So anyway, let me, uh, I'm going to rewipe this right quick. So let me get the camera reset up. I guess this time, this time I'll put the camera over on the filter station. Let you see that. I won't show wiping this. You've already seen me wipe filter once. Once you've seen somebody wipe filler, you've seen them wipe filler. Unless we're doing a big door or something, which this is not. I'm going to get the camera set up over there and I'll be back. Um, we're going to call it here. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Do the subscribe thing, the notification thing. Do all the things. You know, you know what to do. All the YouTube stuff. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. Uh, catch you on the flip side. Y'all come back now, you hear?